to the Runner X podcast, where we talk about all things running. As many runners know, it's 90% mental. So join Coach Valerie and Coach Caroline as we go through the mental side of running. Welcome back to the Runner X podcast. I'm your host, Coach Caroline, and I'm here with Coach Valerie. Coach, um, as you know, I've just, I've moved. I, uh, Valerie and I used to live pretty close to each other, and now I've moved out a couple hours away. I'm still in Texas, um, so we do get to see each other periodically. But um, one of the things I kind of wanted us to talk about is this is the last um, new uh, podcast for the year. This will be uh, posted the last uh, Friday of 2023. And what I've been finding really amazing, and it kind of made me want to talk to our audience about it, was I've been going through, we literally moved absolutely everything, all of our junk. Like I didn't, you know, do the pitch and heave before I moved. We decided we were going to move everything as horrible as it was, but pitch it once it got here. As we found a place for it, we would throw things away. So I was going through what I called my medicine closet. And my medicine closet was where the, you know, all the band-aids are, all the stuff. But it, I started noticing I used to do a lot of supplements. And I still take vitamins and things like that. But I mean, I used to do a lot of like adapt and, you know, take this shake and do it as a pre and post workout and stuff like that. So I had quite a lot of things that had never even been open. And when I looked at the dates on them, they were, you know, 2019, 2020. So we're talking four, going on four years ago, right? <laughs> so I, and it was, what I wanted to bring up was this idea that it was so hard to throw these things away. Because what if I need them? What if I, what if something happens and I, and I want to lose weight again and I want to do this and I want to, what if I, what if I start running again and I need my adaptive workout? Like all these thoughts that came into my head about how it was wasteful or I shouldn't do it. But yet, as I was thinking, if I went to a a store and looked at something and it said 2020, I'd be like, what is this doing on the shelf? I'm not going to buy this. So I did wind up throwing it all away. And it actually felt very cathartic to me because it felt like I was getting rid of the old and bringing in what will be my new and my new uh, life here outside of the city. Um, I'm trying to eat a little bit more, less fast food, definitely. And it's already seen, you know, uh, better nips in my in my weight and so forth. Um, But I kind of wanted to bring that up to you and your thoughts about this idea of it's so cliche, but I think it's so important, this new year, new you, and how you can start with a new attitude, both mentally about your running, about your health, about um, your goals for the new year. How do you handle some of those things? (laughs) Well, I'll say this because most Runners, especially, you know, um, and I'm already seeing all the running magazines putting out New Year, New You. So you're right. It is a cliche. (laughs) However, it's also really fun. Like, I really think, especially as a coach, because I'm year round, like there's no seasons for me. (laughs) Right. You know, I'm I'm always working with someone. I'm always in myself. Personally, I'm all, you know, I I keep a very regular uh, routine. However, the the new the new you or the new the the idea of I'm going to whether I'm going to get started running restart my running so for a lot of our runners that come in to run our X since running pain free is our primary goal a lot of times they're coming in you know with the idea of I don't want to have this injury again or I want to get through this injury and. And it seems so overwhelming. Like you said, you had all these like supplements or things that were going to help you, right? right? So with running, it's running is supposed to be just go buy a pair of shoes. That's all you need and just go running. It seems so simple. <laughs> right. And, and, and then, of course, um, how do you get started? Like, what is it that's going to motivate you to get out the door? So for a lot of runners, you know, it's usually the, the I'm going to sign up for this big event. Like we get this a lot, right? So in order to help me start running, maybe I should sign up for a race. You know, that's usually the the big thing. And then we always come with, well, why don't first, like our, our thought is new year, new you, renew your your uh, relationship with just running. You know, what, it, right. what, it, what do you want to do? What is it really you want to do with running? You want to just feel good running and be able to walk out the door and run. And so... 
we have a really good way of getting, that's why we start people like with the immersion to immerse yourself back into uh, what running can do for you as far as movement wise and feeling good. And so then we talk to our runners about setting goals that are going to make you not just better at running, but just better at movement overall. And that includes like some mobility work, right? Maybe adding in some stretching for the new year, uh, maybe adding in some base strength work to get you ready for running instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to do, um, I, you know, how do I even get started? Right. Right. So what would be some, like for me, from the mental side, I want people to start, um, kind of like letting go of those past things. Um, for, for me, it's a lot of, um, I, I, Oh, I used to be a runner and I have, you know, I have the, I've done four marathons. Well, no, that, that that was a part of your life. And it's great. I also used to do martial arts. I used to play piano. Doesn't mean I'm never going to play piano again. Doesn't mean I'm never going to do martial arts again. Also does not mean I'm never going to run again. Right. But I'm trying to kind of let go of the, what I went through before. Cause that was also before meeting you, like all of those old races I did, all those old goals, all those old, um, uh, I'm trying to think of all the like the salt tablets and the glide and all the stuff I had is literally from five years ago. And so as I start, which I will be starting to run again in 2024 is, is a, is a goal. Um, I want to set up new habits, new things with my new, my new coach. Right. So I kind of want people, if you're, if you're an avid listener and you're looking at your mindset, what kind of mindset goals, you know, do you want for yourself as you're going into this new goal? How would you like somebody to come into you? We talked about being coachable, but aside from just being coachable, how would you like someone to come in if they were going to start working with you in 2024? What are some, some mindset and some goals you would love to see for them as they come in? Um, well, no, number one, I would want people to look at their running, uh, Let's see. So for, like I said, when, when I meet runners, they're already runners or they want to be a runner or come back to being a runner. So the main thing that I like to get across to people is first, let's just get your mindset back into feeling good about running itself. Just the movement right. of running, being more, uh, being a more efficient runner. And one of the things that we start people with is a very basic movement of stand because we work into people just how do I just even hold my body? Right. So, right. Helping, I mean, it's amazing guys, but when you're getting started back into running and most people get back in with, with distance, like their thought is, okay, I'm going to go out tomorrow. I'm going to get started. And I'm going to run for 10 minutes. You, and if I have to walk some, that's okay. Right. Right. Without, right. without any thought of the movement. And so if the goal like if if your first thought is I want to be able to say run for 10 minutes or even just to get out and get started, just I want people to imagine how much easier it would be if you knew that you were going to go out and practice a movement. And then it changes because then like we call it the the one, two, three. Right. We right, have a right. just a really basic way to start pulling your foot up in your movement, whether walking or running, by the way. And then I tell people, go out and just see if you can one, two, three. How does that feel? Because yeah. then you're going to start feeling what does it actually feel like to run? And then I always give people like a base of here's a warm up exercise. How many people, and I know this was me for years and years, my warm up was getting out of the car and walking to the start line or the parking lot. <laughs> 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 that was my warm up. And, you know, and same thing, like so many runners will say to me, oh, I have tight hips or I have tight shoulders or I have tight ankles. Like, you know, you have it yet. You just, OK, that's just part of me. And, and so instead, I work on let's work on getting some movement in your feet and your ankles as well. So we can not have these recurring, you know, uh, injuries of a lot of shins and calves and planters and hips come in for us anyway, right, as runners. So maybe making a really not a minimal goal of I'm going to do some kind of a warm up and I'm going to work on the efficiency of my movement. 
Right. Right. And, and that whole being coachable and being open to things we've talked about, we've got some, some really great students that just come in and say, what do you want me to do? And we tell them what to do and they just do it. Right. <laughs> Isn't well, that, yeah. and, <laughs> well, it's a mindset. The, the greatest success. Yeah. It's truly, it, well, and it's, it's, it's a mindset, but it's also, like I said, being, when I say being coachable, don't you mean like, like being open to the idea that, okay, it may not make sense to me at this moment, but I'm going to do what she wants me to do and I'm going to give it a try and see where it takes me. Like that kind of thought process a right. little bit. Well, um, and, and yeah, go ahead. So I was laughing and this is kind of what I said to you before. So, you know, one of the challenges with runners is, um, and just running is you're kind of on your own. Like you go out and you're running. And even if you're running with a group or other people, you're still in charge of your own movement, right? I mean, you're out there, you're having to move your body forward. However it is you're doing it, somehow you're doing it. And I was laughing because I used to teach group fitness for years and years. And this past week, I went to a group fitness class, which I honestly haven't done in years and years. And it was really fun and really also very funny. One is I'm a terrible student because I've always been the teacher. So I was the one, she'd say, go left. I was going right. (laughs) Um, the movements themselves I could follow and there was no uh, there was no instruction other than either follow me or she'd say you know we're step to the right so all of the movement was just I call it mindless movement meaning it's not how do you do it just try to do it right like step to the right now step to the left or whatever the (laughs) we were doing in the class and however, people really like that because you're guiding their movement. So even if you make a silly mistake, like go to the right or go to the left, you can recover and then get back into the rhythm of the movement. And that's still a very popular way of exercising because then the person at the end of the class feels like, wow, I got a lot of movement. I got my heart rate up. I sweated. There's a lot of success to that. With running, the success for for uh, for most runners is I I got I finished it you know I I made my miles for example um, I finished my race I got through it you know these thoughts however no one's next to you during your run saying now do this now do that right <laughs> right so when you first come in to us to run our X or or even if you're just watching the videos guys you start to see that I'm teaching a movement right I mean if you've watched right. anything it's it's all about learning the movement of running, which is still not common because you're supposed to just go out and run, right? It's just natural. Everybody can run. Why can't you? (laughs) And so there's a little bit of self, um, I'll say self-awareness, but because it's supposed to be natural and you're supposed to know how to do it, then if you're out there struggling, what's the answer, right? Run more. Keep show, you know, and that's what people will say. Just keep showing up, keep running. You're just going to get better at it. And part of that's true. You're going, you're going to adapt somehow to better to to moving, right? Right. However, just imagine if you had the knowledge of what to do while you were running. What am I supposed to be doing right now? What do I do with my hands? You know, people like what am I? And otherwise, you're just mimicking what you see, or you just come up with your own movement, which can work for a while, but. As we know, most of our runners end up, unfortunately, either not reaching their goal or getting injured. So the mindset that I want is someone to come in and be like, I am totally ready to work on my movement, become more efficient in it, and have more confidence in my movement so I can then reach the secondary goals is what I call them. The secondary goal is now sign up for a race. Now you can run longer. Now you can run faster. But that first new year, new you should be, I'm going to really make sure I'm running like I should be running. So that being said, we've talked a couple of times about work, you know, working with a coach and run our X. We've done a couple of different business models of a membership. And well, we started with a course and then we went into a course into a membership. And then we started like the immersion and kind of, which is a, another name for the course. So it was like a 30 day thing that we worked through. And then again, that, that 30 days after 
learning these movements and, and getting a sense of how to do them, we then ask you to join the membership. But in 2024, much like we did in 2020, um, we're changing it up again, right? We're going to go back into just the full on ongoing membership. And with that, um, people will be able to work with you, correct? Uh -huh. What I want to talk about is when they come in, they can, if they want, just go into the training plans, send in a gated analysis, start just doing all the stuff. Or what we prefer and what we kind of nudge you to do is to go through that 30-day immersion course, that 30-day resetting, and then move into the other side. Can you talk about the value of working with you and starting, even if even if this is all I can do, Valerie, I can only give you 30 days. That's all I can afford. That's all I want to do. The value of taking that time to do the immersion as part of this new year. Oh, yeah. So, and we called it the immersion is because we wanted you to immerse yourself in the movement of running. And so many of us, when we, especially if you've been running for a long time already, it just sounds very strange <laughs> to even think of. And what's amazing is if you if you go through, especially with the coach, because I have you check in, I want to see you, you know, it's not just um, hey, go try this and and good luck to you, right? We're we're really involved. And take right. yourself... email email us if you have questions, is kind of how I see it. Like this is your workout. Email me if you have questions. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, well, also, yeah, I can actually send you a video of like, is this what you want me to do? Is this how the drum right. looks? You know, correct. That that's what people need to understand is that the learning process isn't, hey, go out and run. The learning process is let's work on the movement of running. And then you're going to keep progressing that into higher volume, meaning when you're first learning a movement. It doesn't make sense to say, okay, now go now go out there and run some miles, right? I want you to be able to really feel good in the movement of running. So the way we have it set up is you're out there practicing running. So you're moving. Don't get me wrong. You're definitely moving. It's just not a just like go out and run for distance. And what happens also is that as you're learning, the idea is for you to check in. So I have these weekly check-ins so that you can make sure you are learning correctly. And that's important because, you know, that's makes no sense to just have you work on your movement without any kind of communication. And because I've been doing this for so long, when you have a coach, you also should take that opportunity to ask questions. I'm feeling this or I'm not feeling this or is this right? And that's the beauty, of course, of the Internet is that we can, one, communicate, and two, you can show me. You can, you know, there's an opportunity for you to video yourself so I can see you. And we do live classes. We've got Zoom and things like that. Because the idea is let's work on your, uh, not just your movement pattern, your mindset towards your movement. Because not only are we teaching you a physical, like, here's how we want you to move. There's also a perception. Are you feeling this? And it's right. funny in the beginning, because most people have never thought about what does running feel like, unfortunately, unless it hurts. Does right. that make sense? Like, I usually don't hear from people unless they're like, my shin hurts, my calf hurts, my this hurts. And so many of us think, oh, I must have tight calves, right? And, and immediately when we injure ourselves, we think it must be that body part. And when you start to realize that you're, it's really probably not, it, it may just be where your movement pattern isn't as efficient as it could be. It's amazing how you will start to shift both in how you run and also how you feel during your run and even think about running. So to me, that's the joy of the immersion is to be able to go through with your coach. Because if you ever, um, like I said, in a fitness class, for example, you know, there was, so, uh, there was a lot of us in there. She wasn't stopping to correct our movement, right? right. It was just a well, group like... Hey guys, and that's just, what I was 
that's what I was going to bring up. I was thinking about like a soccer coach or a, or a football coach or, or whatever, you know, if I, if I were, if I had my child playing in a soccer, you know, with a soccer coach, you wouldn't expect the soccer coach to just email your daughter, right. (laughs) Or a gymnast. I'm going to email you what I want you to do and let me know if you have any questions. No, they stand there. They watch you. They spot you. They double check your movement. They they're not run. And that's the other thing, guys. They're not running alongside you. Like we've talked about this before. You being there running alongside them, you can't coach them while you're running alongside them. You have to watch right. them. You have, have to, to watch. see the movement. And that's that's what I think is so powerful. Correct. And we don't think about that with running. We'll think about it with things like soccer or football or gymnastics or whatever. You'll you'll let your your mentor, your teacher, your coach watch you from the sidelines and you'll value that and you'll even value it for your for your kids. But you won't value it for yourself and running. And yet all of the sports include running. <laughs> so I always find that amazing. But as we wrap up this this podcast, we were talking about and it kind of ties in with what you were talking about with injuries of what are some things that we can do for the new year to focus on if if I'm getting if if like I think you were talking about this earlier that a, a very common injury maybe primarily for women but women and men we have quite a few that have really tight hips and mm-hmm. and ankles what would be the one goal that I could start working on it, starting in the new year to help with that issue well I would say go all the way up to the shoulder, like every joint. So joint pain is a huge issue in running. So people have heard for years, running hurts your knees, running hurts your knees. And I hear I used to run, but now my knees hurt. So every joint you have, right, needs to be able to move. And this is for life, running or whatnot. So I tell people, we start with the most simple movements, arm circles, hip openers, which are like hip circles, and ankle circles. All of these are doable by anybody. You don't have to have any equipment. <laughs> right. And just adding the ability for your joints to move through their full range of motion is probably the best start to get your whole body to start moving better as a unit. So that being said, guys, if you go to our Runner X YouTube channel, you may be finding this podcast on there. We've started um, uploading them this year, uh, trying to you know get this out there to our, our audience out there on YouTube. Um, we do have quite a few of these um, drills, quite a few of these um, warm-up um, exercises within that. We also still have the 30-day reboot, which we will mm-hmm. be looking at redoing because it's three years old in 2024. Ironically, guys, I can guarantee you the exercises won't be that different. Right. <laughs> um, but we're going to freshen it up. We're going to do maybe right. a reboot refresh is, is a good way to put it out. Maybe we'll do that in January or February. Um, but quite a few of these are part of that. Um, also, strength training and some other things are in there that um, basically, if you guys want to uh, find out what she's talking about, feel free to go into our YouTube channel. There's quite a few videos. And that's going to be a big thing for 2024. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll get these podcasts. But we're going to try to start doing maybe at least um, one or two podcasts uh, a year live with her and I um, either in one location or in two where I might do a movement and she can coach me and show you guys how that works in that coaching under uh, how it works to be coached not in person, right? What does it mean to be coached on a Zoom? Because we do record these as a Zoom. And that would be a a wonderful opportunity for you guys to see what that's like. We would hope that you have already subscribed to us on Instagram, that you're a follower there, that you're a follower on uh, Facebook. Uh, We're now also on X. We're going to be doing some more stuff out there, as well as, of course, as I mentioned, as part of YouTube. We just really want to be able to help you where you are. If you spend a lot of your time on YouTube, if that's where uh, you get a lot of your information, then we want to be there for you. If you're more of a Facebook or an Instagram person or even um, an an X person, formerly known as Twitter, uh, we want to be able to reach you where you are. Again, trying to keep the videos relatively short, though I will warn you, I've been... um, uh, tickling the mind of of Valerie to come up with some deeper dives. Like we're so used to these 
one minute, 90 second, little short videos, little short things. But guys, even I think our longest um, conversation is was like 20 or 30 minutes. We want to be able to go like deep into those and not just have it be 20 or 30 minutes on five or six things, like one topic, like hips. What do we do for hips, right? Um, what about my feet? Oh my God. How do I, how do I adjust my, you know, work with my feet or my, or my shoulders or just taking a topic. And that being said, if you have a topic you want us to discuss, please feel free to email us at support at runnerx.fit. That's support at runrx.fit. Thanks guys. Thank you for joining us on the RunnerX podcast. If you'd like to know more, join us at www.runnerx.fit. And if you have additional questions that you'd like answered on the podcast, email us at support at runnerx.fit.